Welcome to Mischief Wargaming, I'm John and this is Blood Bowl. We've reached the end of the third round of the Mischief Cup with today's game. The round so far has seen a surprisingly close game between Darkmire and Hexorattle, and a brutal bloodbath between Dunderhaven and Greenshire. But now it's time for Borderland Bloodseekers to face the Wild Glade Wanderers. The Bloodseekers have had a fairly slow start to the league. The Bloodspawn have barely appeared so far and the team suffering a slightly humiliating pummeling from the Halflings. But with how battered and bruised the Wood Elves are, maybe the team will finally gain Korn's favour and score some points. Grimner is the only Marauder of note, having Block, and to make up for Herc and Spleen Rip being injured, two Marauder journeymen have been brought on. While the Korn team look to pick up momentum, the Wildglade Wanderers are looking to survive. Having suffered two deaths in two games, the team are bringing in journeymen as well. All their hopes are in one war dancer at the moment, which may prove to be a mistake if they go the way of their previous war dancer. The Bloodseekers win the coin toss and choose to receive the ball first. The two teams are set up with perfect blood bowl conditions. Once the ball is kicked, the kickoff result is cheering fans. Borderlands win the roll off and can make a prayer to Nuffle. The prayer is intensive training. A random player, in this case Skull Rage, gains the block skill for this game. The ball lands on Jeff, but he's unable to catch it. The game begins with the open marauders charging forwards. Jeff then picks up the ball before joining the charge. Gorehound blitzes Serdan. His horns easily knocking the elf down and creating an opening. Skull Rage begins his assault as he blocks the elf journeyman. breaking her armour and stunning her. Bloodcall passes his unchanneled fury check before hammering the other journeyman. He one-ups the Bloodseeker as he knocks out the Elf. Grimner throws a block at Elnor, knocking her down, but she's otherwise unharmed. The Wanderers are already down a player, but when they can get that War Dancer at Jeff, there is a chance to turn things around. Green Rose blocks Gorehound, knocking him down and creating an opening for Haleth.
who blitzes the ball carrier, Jeff. He's only able to push the Marauder back, but how the strip ball means that Jeff still drops the ball. Unfortunately for Wildblade, Graf is able to catch it. To mitigate the incoming attack, Marowen, Callan, Erin and Elva dodge away from the Bloodseekers. Having narrowly kept possession, the open marauders move across the field to create as much distance as they can with the war dancer. Bud Call then blitzes Callan. using his mighty blow skill to break the elf's armour, the attack leaving him stunned. Lastly, Grimner blocks Serdan. He can only push the elf back, but his frenzy skill means he must make a second block, which is in the elf's favour. Despite rolling well, Wildglade chews the result, and so Serdan is only pushed back again. The Wanderers begin to try and surround Gra, with Aaron and Eleanor dodging to do so. Halef then blitzes Jeff. But he's only able to push the Marauder back. But now he's putting pressure on the ball carrier. Serdan blocks Grimner, but can only push him. Green Rose has better luck as they block Gorehound. Breaking the Beastman's armour and stunning him. Meanwhile, Marilyn pushes the other Corngore towards the crowd. Borderlands Marauders move in to aid the ball carrier. Jeff blocks Halef, knocking him to the ground.
This lets Gra make a break for it. Blood Cool charges at the catcher. Easily overpowering the elf. While the first attack only pushes him back, the frenzied follow up knocks Ashton to the dirt. Snarlskin pushes Narwin back. While Skull Rage knocks the journeyman down. Hara blocks Eleanor, pushing her back. The follow up is more successful. Stunning her. Most of the Wood Elves get back to their feet. With Aston having to dodge away from the hulking blood spawn. Green Rose bullets his Gra, but needs to use a reroll to avoid disaster. Instead, the ball carrier is only pushed back. The Bloodseekers continue their assault as Hurrah blocks the nearby journeyman. He needs to use a reroll but is able to knock the elf to the floor. Skull Rage pushes Sir down back. before his frenzy follow-up floors them. Blood Call passes his unchanneled fury check before moving in. While Jeff blocks Elva. leaving her stunned. Grimner blocks Aaron, knocking her down. Worse for the elf, her armour breaks, and the first casualty of the game is scored. The injury is a lasting injury, so Wild Blade uses their apothecary, and instead Aaron is just seriously injured, meaning she'll miss the next game. Gra adds to the Wanderer's woes as he blocks Green Rose.
an attack which also causes a serious injury. With three players already off the field, and the rest mostly down, things are looking pretty bad for the elves. Still, Eleanor and Serdan dodge away from the Borderlands players. while Hanif leaps to safety, ending a very short turn for the Wanderers. After that quick break, it's right back to the Borderlands' turn. Skull Rage blocks Callum, needing to use a reroll to knock the elf flat. Gremlin, meanwhile, only manages to push the journeyman back. A few open players move into pile on Elva as Jeff kicks her while she's down, committing a foul. Yet another casualty. But at least Alpha is only badly hurt, meaning she'll be back for the next game. Starskin can only push Marowen back, even with the support. Bloodcall blitzes Serdan. Pushing him back before knocking him down with the frenzy follow up. This frees up Gra, who heads for the end zone. He needs to make a rush check, but he manages to score a touchdown. The Borderland Bloodseekers are leading one to nothing against the Wildglade Wanderers. Off camera, the knocked out journeyman recovers and the team gets set up. The ball is kicked, and I make a mistake, and I, for some reason, misread the D8. The kickoff result is get the ref. Both teams gain a free bribe to use this game. Still several players down, Wild Glade don't have many options, but that doesn't stop Marilyn from picking up the ball. And handing it off to Aston. Once the open elves move up, Serdan and the two journeymen dodge away from the wall of angry muscle that is the corn team.
the followers of the Blood God close in around the Elf team. Skull Rage then blitzes Serdan, pushing him back. His follow-up attack knocks the Lyman down. Bloodcall then fails his unchanneled fury roll, and that ends the Bloodseeker's turn. Aston begins the Wanderer's turn by dodging away before handing the ball off to Halef. He manages to catch it despite the pressure from the nearby Marauders. Alef puts their war dancer skills to use as he leaps over the chaos team. He then tries to dodge away, but even after using his dodge skill reroll, fails and trips over. Worse his armour breaks and he ends up stunned. Wild Glade just cannot catch a break as they lose possession. Bloodcall begins the turn by blitzing the nearby journeyman. The overwhelming strength easily causing him to stumble. For some reason I forget to use the Bloodspawn's Mighty Blow skill, but at this point Wildglade need all the help they can get. Skull Rage then blocks the other Jane, knocking her down. Rather than blocks Eleanor. Stunning her. Grah goes to pick up the ball, but fails. The Bloodseekers aren't too worried about scoring again before the end of the half, so don't use a reroll. Letting the ball bounce. It happens that one of the journeymen was in the right place at the right time, and she manages to catch it. But as Graf failed, a turnover still occurs. Unfortunately, with so many players down or prone, Wildglade don't have much to do but try and dodge. Even this is appearing to be too much, as one of the journeymen can fall. They end up stunned, and the elves suffer a turnover. Blood Call blocks Serdan, causing the elf to stumble, but his armour holds. Gorehound blocks Callan, 
With the assist, the elf stumbles towards the crowd. Hara overpowers the catcher, sending Ashton into the dirt. With some help, Gra commits a foul on Halef, but even with the extra boots, the War Dancer's armor holds out. Skull Rage blitzes Marilyn. Pushing her back before the Frenzy follow-up gives the Bloodseeker the chance to use their temporary block skill. On the last turn of the half, Wildglade suffer yet another casualty, as Marowen is seriously injured. With nothing to do, the Wanderers get up before the end of the half. There is hope. With the War Dancers still around, the team could still score, but they are at a significant numbers disadvantage. The kickoff result is a quick snap. D3 plus 3, in this case a total of 4, Borderlands players move one square. The ball comes to rest and Wildglade begin their turn. And it's immediately ended, as Aston, even using a team reroll, fails to pick up the ball. Taking advantage, the Borderlands players close in around the Elves. The Hulking Blood Spawn blocks Callum. knocking them out and exasperating the Wanderer's numbers problem. Skull Rage blocks the journeyman, causing him to stumble. and Snarlskin blitzes the War Dancer, but is only able to push him back. Aston takes another crack at picking up the ball. This time he succeeds. 
and runs up the field. However, whatever plan the Wood Elves had is thrown out of the window when Hannah fails a dodge roll. Even after his skill reroll. He's unharmed, but another turnover means things are looking very bleak for the Wild Grey Wanderers. Not wasting this opportunity, the Bloodseekers go back to punching elves. Grimner blocks Eleanor, causing her to stumble. Gorehound follows up by blocking the journeyman. causing her to stumble and stunning her. Skull Rage then flattens the other journeyman. but he's always unharmed. Jeff pushes Serdan back. Points after his frenzy. Harrow blitzes Aston, knocking the catcher down and stunning him. ball is free, and the Marauder manages to catch it, stealing possession from the Wood Elves. Not letting up, Grath then blocks Serdan. Stunning him. Lastly, Bloodcall can't let the turn end without kicking an elf while she's down. Knocking her out. With hardly any players left, the best the Wanderers can hope for is to minimise incoming damage. Eleanor dodges twice to escape the Frenzy Berserkers. While Halef has to use a team reroll to leap away. With time on their side, the Bloodseekers are in no rush to score a second touchdown, choosing not to risk a rush check. So now Skin blitzes Halef, but 
can only push the wall dancer back. Scar Rage follows the assault, the strength and numbers advantage knocking Hannah flat. Jeff blocks the remaining journeyman. But is unable to push him back. Lastly, Blockhorn needs to pass an unchanneled Fury check just to walk forward without punching someone. The Wanderers can do nothing to prevent the Bloodseekers from scoring again, so the remaining team dodge away from the followers of Corn. Bloodcore blitzes Aston, easily knocking the catcher out. This lets Hurrah score a touchdown without any issue. At this time, Wildglade make the difficult decision to concede the game. With so few players remaining, they only stand to suffer more injuries if they continue. This gives the Borderland Bloodseekers an extra touchdown, winning the game 3 to nothing. By conceding, the Wanderers earn no winnings, and cannot have an MVP, and lose some dedicated fans. They try to fix their lack of numbers by hiring a new lineman, Aphis. But even so, we'll face the Hexavital Sun Warriors with even more journeymen than they had this game. Here is the roster going into that game. By contrast, what a dominant game by the Borderland Bloodseekers. They pick up a stack of winnings, and the MVP was Blood Call. More than a few more orders have earned some skills. Gra ends up with Wrestle, Ra ends up with Short Hands. Hara ends up with Dirty Player, and Grumner gets Shadowing, all randomly rolled for. Bloodcall, however, chooses his skill and picks Brawler to help mitigate both down results. With their winnings, the team hire a new Bloodseeker, Viscera. Their next game is facing the Dunderhaven Dukes, and this is their roster going forwards. And here are the updated league standings for round 3. With that game, the Bloodseekers have shot right into second, only behind the Wanderers who somehow cling on to first. Whether the team survives long enough to reap any rewards remains to be seen. The next game will see the halflings of the Greenshire Greats face the Darkmire Monster Mash, who did not gain an extra zombie from their game against Hexrattle, like I initially said in that video. And that ends the, this round of the Mischief Cup. The next video will be something completely different. Until then, thank you very much for watching. Take care.